All right, this is number 52, and I copied number 52's letters right here over here. So then I can take, I can go to the back cover of the textbook, and then I can have the useful conversion factors and relationships available as well while I'm doing it. Starting with letter A, we have 0 0.105 inches. Put a multiply sign, put a line, and then we want to put inches in a position where it's going to cancel, and we want to go to something that's going to get us to millimeters. And the closest that we have going from inches to millimeters is inches to centimeters. You can see it says the word exactly right there, meaning this has an infinite number of significant figures. So we have 2.54 centimeters in one inch, and then we can continue after we get our inches to cancel to go from centimeters to millimeters, our desired units right here. So notice we put the units that we have in a position where they're going to cancel and then our desired units right here. And so then you can find millimeter right here, centimeter right here, and you can see that they're 10 apart from one another. There's 10 of the small unit and the big unit, so there would be 10 of these units in one of these. And then if you run this through on your calculator, you should end up with 2.67 millimeters. Letter B, 0 0.650 quarts, and then we want that in milliliters. So we're going to have to go over here to volume, and we're going to have, some, have to find something that gets us from quarts into the metric system. And so there's a quart right here going to a liter. You can see this quart to liter. This is equal also to 3.7854 liters. And then once we get into liters, then we can get it into milliliters like this. So quart in a position where it's going to cancel. Liters is my desired or new units. And we can see that we have 1.0567 quarts in one liter. We could have also used this relationship uh, to four quarts if we wanted to, but we'll just use the one quart right here. And then we're going to have to go from liters to milliliters. So put the units that we want to cancel in the position where they're going to cancel. Put milliliters as our new set of units. And we can see milli is 10 to the third smaller than the base unit of liter right here. So it'll be 10 to the third of the smaller unit in the big unit. So 10 to the third milliliters in one liter right here. Run this through on your calculator and then multiply by 10 to the third. And then in regular notation, this ends up being 615 milliliters to three sig digs because we start with three sig digs right here. This zero is significant because it's at the end, a trailing zero after a number with a decimal. Letter C, we have 8.75 micrometers per second, and we want to get to kilometers per hour right up here. And so first thing I'm going to do is go from micrometers to kilometers. So micrometer in a position where it's going to cancel. And if you look at micrometer, that's right down here. And we want to get to kilo right up here. So kilometers on the top. And if you do some counting, this is 10 to the 6th to get you to the base unit right here. And then from 10 to the 6th up to kilo is 10 to the 3rd. So 10 to the 6th and 10 to the 3rd gets you 10 to the 9th. So there's 10 to the 9th of the small unit and the big unit. So it would be 1 times 10 to the 9th of the micro in 1 kilometer right here. I like writing it like this because then you know you take the 8.75 and divide it by 1, and then you subtract the exponents. So it would be 0 minus 9, so you'd end up with a negative 9 in that part. The second part that we need to do is go from seconds to hours. Notice that seconds are in the bottom right here, so I want to have that unit cancel. So I put seconds up here and hours in a position where it's my desired unit, because I want it on the bottom. See how it's on the bottom right here? Hours is on the bottom right here. There are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour, so there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. And then if we run this through on your calculator, we end up with 3.15 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that would be kilometers per hour. Letter D, 1.955, and this is Q 
cubic meters, so meters cubed, and we want to go to yards. So we're going to have to look here in length and see if we have a relationship between meters and yards. And look at that, we do. So we can put meters in a position where it's going to cancel yards as our new set of units. And in one meter, there are 1.0936 yards. And then notice this is cubed, which means I have to take this entire quantity and cube it which means that this number has to be cubed. The yards is cubed. One cubed, of course, is one. And the cubed the meters right here. So then cube 1.0936 before you multiply it by 1.955. And then when you multiply those together, you end up with 2.557 cubic yards. Letter E, sliding this up just a little bit. Whoops, keep that in there. We have $3.99 dollars per pound. Notice I put the dollars on the top because that's my set of units right there. And then what I want to know is I want to know dollars per kilogram. So dollars go here, it'd still be the same. And then kilogram is my desired unit and I want the kilogram on the bottom. I want dollars to remain the same, so actually I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm going to put kilogram down here because that's what I want to know. And I'm going to look in here, do I have a relationship between kilograms and pounds? And I do, so I can put pounds up here in a position where it's going to cancel. So my dollars will stay where they're at, and then I'll end up with the units of kilograms on the bottom like this. And it says that in one kilogram there are 2.2046 pounds. There's three sig figs to start with, so after you multiply these two together, you want to end up with three sig figs, and it ends up at 8.80, or $8.80 per kilogram. Last one, letter F. We have a cubed unit right here going to a volume unit of milliliters. That's going to make this one pretty tricky. So we'll start with 8.75 pounds, and then put that over my feet cubed right here. And I need to get pounds to grams, which you can see I have a pounds and grams right here, so let's do that first. That's going to be the easy part. So pounds right here and then grams right here. So my pounds will cancel with my pounds. And in one pound, there's 453.59 grams. And then I can get my feet cubed right here, I have to get to be milliliters. And if you remember, a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. And so if I can get this feet into centimeters, then I could cube it. So let's look at our distance lengths right here. And we do have feet. Well, you probably know that feet can go to inches. And then we could go from inches to centimeters and the cubic centimeter would be a milliliter. So let's go from feet to a desired unit of inches. We probably all know that there's 12 inches in a foot, but notice this is cubed. So this entire thing has to be cubed. And then we could go from inches to centimeters right here, either, using either one of these right here. But centimeters is what I want to know, so I put inches in a position where it's going to cancel. And in one inch, there's 2.54 centimeters. You can see that relationship right here. And then don't forget, you have to cube that. So the tricky part here is to make sure that you cube the 1, cube the feet, cube the 12, and cube the inch. Cube the 1, cube the inch, cube the 2.54, and cube the centimeters right here. And then be careful of your order of operations when you do this. Get an intermediate answer here, get an intermediate answer here, and then do multiplied equals, divide equals, and then divide again by that. And then you should end up with decimal point. 140 grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. Remember what a cubic centimeter is equal to a milliliter. That's 52.